Welcome to another Mad For War tutorial. Mad For War is great for squadron and fleet actions, but it's also really fantastic for ship against ship battles. And this one is a cracker. The first Anglo-Dutch war actually began with some schoolyard antics from Martin Tromp and Robert Blake, the two admirals in command of each of the fleets, the Dutch and the English. You've got to picture the scene. It's September in 1652, off the coast of England, near Dover. Both of the respective fleets are some distance away and the two flagships are pretty much playing chicken with live ammunition. The English had introduced a rule whereby any foreign ship in what they considered to be their waters had to lower its colours in deference to a passing English ship. Old Tromp wasn't too keen on that. Not only did he ignore the guidance, he decided to allow his men to practice firing their muskets within earshot of Dover itself. When Blake decided to fire a few warning shots across the bows of the Brederode from his flagship James, that's when the trouble really started. When one of Blake's shots hit Brederode, Tromp retaliated with a broadside, and hey, we had a war. This game isolates the flagships and puts them in a one-to-one -one contest against each other. The flagships are quite well matched. The Dutch ship is custom built. It's a 54 gun. James is somewhat older, but sturdy and well built, and the equal of Brederode. At this point, Martin Tromp was already the most famous admiral in the Western world. Robert Blake was an unknown quantity, a relatively minor Civil War commander who had changed his career to become a general at sea. Although both admirals had outstanding careers, Tromp is receiving a plus one on his initiative throws simply because of his experience. Okay, so let's crunch the numbers. Both ships have identical points values, but I've really pimped them up by giving them some extra features. Each has a veteran crew. Each has extra characters. Both have a master gunner and a flag officer. In addition, Brederode has a surgeon and a carpenter. James also has a carpenter together with a master mariner. Each character type provides some benefits during the battle. Both have 16 strength points and both will move at standard speed. Let's have a look at the differences. In the First Anglo-Dutch War, the Republic's ships were largely undergunned. As the largest and most powerful ship in the whole navy, Brederode does have a few heavy guns, but not enough to give the heavy gun classification in this game, so her guns are classed as middling. The English just loved big guns. Even though James is nowhere near the largest ship in the fleet, she has been classed as having heavy guns, and that will have an impact on the game. Heavy guns get rethrows, but they also take longer to load so that will have an impact on tactics. Another big difference is the general approach to sea fighting. English tactics generally centered around pounding opponents into submission with their heavy guns. Not having this advantage, the Dutch preferred to close and board as quickly as possible. Both ships have soldiers and marines aboard, but the Dutch will be more aggressive and look for the opportunity to board quickly if they can. The wind direction is set and the battle begins with the ships beyond random shot range. So here we go. A Clash of the Titans. Turn 1. Tromp gets plus 1 for superior initiative and plus 1 for the windward position. He chooses to make the English move first. James moves 2 inches and then decides to make a larboard turn of 30 degrees. Her turns are limited by the heavy gun she's carrying. She moves again and makes another turn to starboard of 30 degrees. Brederode moves straight ahead 4 inches and then makes one single turn to starboard of 45 degrees. This gives us the final positions at the end of turn 1. Using initiative and trying to anticipate what your opponent might do is half the fun. The closer ships get, the higher stakes become in terms of the decision making game. On turn two, Tromp again has the initiative and makes Blake move first. Both ships are moving at the same speed trying to find a good firing position. Brederode's ability to make 45 degree turns gives her a little bit of an edge.
A combination of initiative and manoeuvrability has placed Brederoda in a position to deliver an early broadside. The ships are at engagement range which will half the number of dice available to the Dutch ship. Brederoda has five shooting dice and whether it's two or three is decided by a 50% die throw. Fortunately, Tromp scores three. With the all-important first broadside, the signature die type goes up one level, so the D10s normally used by Brederoda become D12s. Brederoda has a master gunner, so the normal 6 to hit becomes a 5 plus to hit. 3D12 looking for 5 plus is pretty handsome odds. What a disaster! All of the shots fall short or wide. This is a significant let off for the James. And here's the reload marker going down on Brederoda. Obviously bolstered by that great escape in turn 2, the English win the initiative on turn 3. Blake makes Tromp move first and the Dutch ship makes a full move, broad reaching, 6 inches, straight ahead, finishing off with a 45 degree turn to starboard. Blake spots a real opportunity. His ship moves and then he invokes one of the special rules. He's gonna to attempt to back sail and hold position where he can deliver a broadside. So James will not make a full move if it passes the skill check. This illustrates one of those little tactical opportunities that players must always be looking out for in the game. Blake is successful and we have the English broadside reply. This shooting is also from engagement range and Blake will half his number of dice available. Unfortunately for him, he only manages to shoot with two dice. As it's the first English broadside, the dice are changed from D10 to D12. 2D12, scoring on 5. The English gunners are considerably more successful than the Dutch and there's no need for any of the rethrows for the heavy guns. Heavy guns mean two reload markers which means the English ship will not be able to shoot for at least two turns. Turn four was one of manoeuvre. The English had the initiative. Neither ship fired but Tromp used the time industriously to make some repairs. At the end of the movement step one of the two reload markers was automatically removed from James. On turn five, Trump's superior initiative capability broke the deadlock. Trump managed to get Brederoda into the perfect shooting position. This is the dream shot in naval warfare, murder range, stern raking broadside. To achieve it, Trump also had to take the backing sail check, which he did successfully. Even with 6d12 hitting on 5, Trump was unable to deliver the killer blow, although some damage was sustained by James. Roster sheets help to manage the various data. Recording ammunition used, damage sustained, catastrophic hits, repairs made, which ships were fired upon, this all helps the narrative. I love all that stuff and I use it for these reports and for my own personal records. The Dutch again got the initiative in turn 6, Blake was forced to move as Tromp tried to manoeuvre him into a position where he could again fire his guns. Both ships successfully reloaded, but only Brederoda was in a position to fire. The punishment was taking its toll on James, and she moved into the visibly damaged category on her strength chart. Turn 7 once again saw the Dutch with the initiative, forcing the English to move first. The master tactician Tromp again reloads and gets his ship into a position to hit the English opponent with impunity. 
This would be the fourth turn of Dutch fire, and after this they only have two broadsides left, so they really have to make them count now. Hits are accumulating on James, but she's a big ship and she's taking the damage. Tromp really does need to deliver the sucker punch. Turn 8, and it looks like the Dutch Admiral is running rings around Blake. But, the wheels are just about to come off the bus. Tromp decides to move first because he can see an opportunity to deliver a bow-raking broadside to the English ship. He moves into position, but fails the all-important backing sail skill check and has to sail on. This offers Blake the golden opportunity to reverse the situation, and boy, does he take it. It's the naval wargaming equivalent of a perfect 10. Murder range, stern raking shot with three extra dice from the rake. Remember, Blake's ship has heavy guns, and so he gets to rethrow half of his misses. The English ship scores an impressive six hits. This creates a catastrophic damage check. The result? Brederoda's powder store catches fire. She had two broadsides left and the powder for these is now lost. Effectively, she's defenceless. Both ships have suffered the same amount of damage, but what a dramatic turnaround. From Blake being punished turn after turn, suddenly he's got the upper hand. Turn 9 and Tromp needs to do something dramatic and quickly. He has the initiative but he can't shoot so he needs to board. Blake needs time to reload. Even without guns, Brederoda is still a strong opponent. Tromp makes Blake move first and tries to get his ship as close as possible. He achieves a perfect position to board, if only he can get the initiative on turn 10. And he does. Trump passes the boarding check easily. Two veteran ships of this size enter the boarding combat with two signature dice each. Modifiers are added for characters, damage level, marines and flag officers. Adjustments are made, meaning the Dutch will add plus one to their dice score. Now we have the combat throws. In the first round, the English score eight and the Dutch 12. It all looks like it's going Tromp's way. Blake has to take a morale check, but passes. A second round is fought because the English have not yet activated. And, high drama. The Dutch score eight, but the English score a magnificent 17. They win the combat, they capture Brederoda, and the battle is over. Blake suffered a flesh wound in the victory, but his men cheer him to the echo. Allegedly, an incredulous tromp was found cowering in his cabin, having had a breakdown. This 10-turn game with two ships was played on a 4x4 table and had 40 minutes of gameplay. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned to our League of Augsburg YouTube channel for some more action.